So today we're going to be making a cute little pumpkin pie tissue box cover. I don't want to waste your time so let's just get straight into the materials. I just took rip off my nails actually so please ignore my fingers. Again, let's just focus on the tutorial. You're going to need a threading needle, a stitch marker, a pair of scissors, and a 4.5 hook. You will need two different colors of yarn, brown for the crust and orange for the pumpkin pie. You will also need some white yarn for the whipped cream. This is weight for acrylic yarn. Brand is I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with orange. So right now we're going to be making the top of the cover. We will be starting right here and working up to the middle. Then we will do chains and then work the rest of the top of the tissue box cover. Let's get started. So to reach all the way across my tissue box, I needed a chain of 30. So to do a chain, you're going to grab your yarn, wrap it around your index and middle finger to make an X like so. Then you're going to grab your hook, go under the bottom part of the X, then grab this top part of the X, pull it under and turn your hook upwards like this. And then you can take your fingers out and pull on both strands of the yarn to tighten the knot and there's your slip knot. Then we're going to pull on a working piece that is attached to our skein and just pull that to tighten a knot around our hook. So now we're going to chain 30. You just yarn under our strand and pull through our slip knot. Then just do that 29 more times because this is our very first one. Again, just yarn under, turn your hook downwards and pull through the loop on our hook. I will meet you once I have 30. So here's our chain of 30. We're going to go into the second stitch. So this is the first one right here. This is the second and just single crochet all the way down. So to do a single crochet, go into the stitch, pull up a loop yarn over and pull through both loops on a hook. I'll do that one more time. Go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. So we're going to do this all the way down. You should end with 28 single crochet. Okay, so here's 29 single crochets. For rounds to the eight, you're going to be chaining one, turning your work, and just single crocheting all the way down. And I did eight rounds because that is how much it took to reach the opening, the middle of the tissue box. So do however many you need, but I needed eight. So I will meet you once we have done eight rows of single crochet. So I did eight single crochet until I reached the opening. And since I did eight on this side, I have to do eight on this side to keep it even. And then whatever is left in the middle, that is the amount of chains we're going to make. So let's count eight from this side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. However many stitches are here, that is the number of chains we're going to make. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So we're going to chain thirteen. Okay, then we're going to skip all those 13 stitches and go into the 14th stitch with a single crochet. So right here, do a single crochet into it. And then we have seven more single crochet left. All right, so that is the end of round nine. And everything is looking even. Here is the opening. So now we're just going to be doing eight more rows of single crochet for the other side of the tissue box. So again, chain one and turn your work. We're just doing the same old single crochet, except whenever you get into the chains over here, you have to make sure that you do the correct amount. So this was a chain of 13. So we need to have 13 single crochets into here. Okay, so let's do our first single crochet into the chains together. The first one can go right here. So that is one single crochet. Our second can go right here. Two single crochet, and third. And again, just make sure you have 13 or however many chains you did. 
Okay, just finished all our 13. So now we should have eight single crochets left. So the first one will go right here, just in case you were confused. And then that will end round 10. Okay, so here we are after round 17. For round 18, we're going to chain one, and then we're going to single crochet all around the four sides. Since I did eight and eight rows, I should have 16 single crochet total on this side, and then here we did a chain of 30, but then we skipped that first chain, so we actually had 29 single crochets. So that is what we should end with on this side. Then again, 16, and here we should have 29. So in total, we should end with 90 stitches. If you're off by like one or two, I won't tell anyone. It won't really matter because your project will stretch. So it's okay if you miss a stitch or two. So we're on a short side. We need to have 16. We already chained one. You can really put it kind of wherever you want. That's why it's easy to miss a stitch or two. So I put my first one here and grab your stitch marker. That way it's a lot easier for you, to, for you to keep count. So that was our first one. I'm gonna put my second one right here. Two, three, four. All right, I just did 16. So now we're going down our first long side. Should end with around 29 and I'm going to work into this end. So I'm going to put my first single crochet right here. One, two, three. Okay, just finished my 29. Now we're going to turn a corner and do 16 more. You don't have to chain one when you're turning the corners, just so you know. Okay, so I just finished up the second long side and now we are back here at our stitch marker. For rounds 19 to 36, you're just going to be single crocheting all the way around. No chain ones or anything, just regular single crochet. And if you would like, you could continue. Every time you get to your stitch marker, you could chain one and turn your work, but I am just going to be working in the round from now on just because I don't like starting my rounds with chain one and turn and I like just working continuously not having to worry about that. So if you're going to be doing a chain one and turn, I put my stitch marker in the first single crochet, not the chain. So that means this right here would be the chain. So you would be making a slip stitch into this chain and then doing your chain one and turn. I don't want to do that like I said just because I don't really like slip stitching and doing the chain one so I'm just going to be skipping that and going straight into this the first single crochet of round 19 and just starting those rows of single crochet and then put your stitch marker back so you can remember which one was the first single crochet okay so here we are after round 36 so now we can cut off our yarn and weave in this end okay so grab your brown yarn and we're going to start the pie crust so this is a little confusing so stick with me please i'm doing the frosting like this because i don't like sewing pick which side you want to be the back of your tissue box cover i'm picking this side we're starting at the back you want to find the single crochet row that is the sort of turning row that is like on the corner right here it's not on top and it's not on the side sort of right in the middle and for me that would be as you can tell this is still on top this is already on the side of the box so right here this whole little row is the corner so we're going to go into the row you can see the stitches right here hopefully let me try to point it out right there that's the single crochet one single crochet from this row. You can mark it with a stitch marker just to keep track. And you can pick anywhere to start. I'm just gonna pick right here, just because. Make sure to not catch two single crochets from a different row. Like this is one single crochet from the row above, 
and then another single crochet row. You only want one. So we're going to turn it and have the back of the tissue box facing outward away from us because when we're working a bobble stitch, it it goes over this way. So the bobble stitch will line up perfectly on the side. So if we're working this way, the bobble stitch is gonna go on top of the box and we don't want it like that. We want it right on the edge right here. So have the box facing you like this. Grab your brown yarn. You're going to pull it through whichever stitch you pick. Leave a little tail to weave in. We're going to chain one. For at least the first bobble stitch, I like to keep my tissue cover on the actual tissue box just so I can get a feel and look for how this is actually going. And now we're going to do a bobble stitch after our chain one. So to do a bobble stitch, you yarn over, go into the same stitch that we did the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and only pull through two loops. We're gonna do this a total of five times. We just did one, so we need four more. And we should end with six loops on our hook. So yarn over, go into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, only pull through two loops on our hook. So let's do this three more times, two more. This is our last one. Yarn over, go into the stitch, pull up a loop, Yarn over, only pull through two. So we have just done this five times. We should have six loops on our hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we're going to yarn over and pull through all six loops on our hook. Then you can kind of pull this in just to tighten it and up here also. And here's our first bobble stitch. And as you can see, you can puff it up. It's going to fall right on the edge where we want it. So in between each bobble, we're going to do just one single crochet. So go into that loop. I'm gonna work into this end so I don't have to sew it in later. Pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Then we're going to do another bobble and just repeat this pattern all the way around. A, a bobble, one single crochet, a bobble, one single crochet. Okay, so we just did a single crochet, let's do one bobble. So for a bobble, remember, yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Doing this five times. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, go into the same stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, only pull through two. Make sure you have six loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all six. You can tighten it a tiny bit, not too much. Then one single crochet into the next stitch, which for me is right here. All right, then you can pop this bobble stitch out and I'm going to take this off my tissue box now because I got the hang of it now. So bobble stitch right here. As you can see, this is a row of single crochets we're working with. I'll do one more with you without the tissue box in and then I will meet you at the end. So we already did our single crochet, time to do another bobble. Yarn over, pull through all six, do a single crochet, and it is a bit easier to accidentally go into two rows when you don't have the box on. So sometimes you'll just have to double check right here. This is one single crochet. This would be you accidentally going into two. You can see it's way thicker, so just go into one. This is our single crochet. You can pop out our bobble stitch and just repeat this all the way around and I will meet you right back here so we can connect the last bobble to this first bobble. I did my last single crochet right here. If you have enough space, you can do that. If not, you can just go straight into attaching the first and last bobble. So you just go into this first little stitch right here. So these two and just connect them with a slip stitch. So go into that stitch, pull up a loop, and then pull through. And that is your slip stitch. Then you can cut off a tail to weave in the end. And what I like to do to make it look more realistic is push in the bobbles the other way. So they're a bit inverted. I already started over here as you can see 
and then just fix it to your liking or you can leave it like this popping out but that looks a bit more like a cake to me so i like to just pop them inwards for the frosting or whipped cream we're going to do a magic ring and single crochet six into it so to do a magic ring you grab the yarn and you make an x again like with the slip knot then you go under the bottom part of the x grab the top part and go under turn your hook upwards then we're going to grab the top part of the x again and then turn our hook downwards and pull through the loop on our hook that is your magic ring right here you can pull tight on the working piece of yarn to tighten it around your hook and then single crochet six into the magic loop so go in through the circle pull up a loop yarn over and pull through two and i already have two so we need four more okay we're going to close the magic circle by pulling on this strand and holding on to our single crochets you can pull tight then we're going to do a single crochet increase into all of the six stitches go into the first single crochet which is right here and do two single crochets into it so here's our first single crochet and our second single crochet and grab your stitch marker then just do two single crochets all the way around so you should end with 12 single crochets okay for round three we're going to be doing three double crochet into every stitch but in the back loop only so this would be the back loop right here and this is the front loop so three double crochet in the back loop of every single stitch so that's one two and three all in that first stitch then Grab your stitch marker and just repeat that all the way around. Three double crochet in the back loop only. For round four, we're going to go into all of those front loops that we just skipped. It would be these right here. You can see little lines. These are all the front loops that we didn't go into. And there should be 12. So now we're going to do three half double crochet into every front loop stitch so the first one is right here so three half double crochet into this front loop and just repeat that all the way around for a total of 12 times okay and then that is it so you can cut off your yarn and weave in these this end just right here where it sort of naturally just falls Okay, so I made another whipped cream with a 3.0 hook and it is a little bit smaller. So whichever look you prefer, this is with the 4.5 hook. Um, I'm gonna go with the bigger whipped cream, but I just wanted to show y'all. You can make it a little bit smaller by sizing down your hook. So you just repeat this two times to make two of them. And then of course you can sew them in place or even hot glue if you don't want to deal with sewing this down because it is a bit confusing and annoying with all of the ruffles but basically you would just pick anywhere on the bottom you won't be able to really see so it doesn't matter where you go through and just attach it to the top of your tissue box and just go around in as best of a circle as you can okay so i just attached both my little whipped cream thingies and after that the project is done thank you so much for watching you should definitely tag me in your creations over on instagram my username is just makes and i would really love to see what other cool designs you come up with if you change this up a little bit thank you so much for watching i hope you have a great day or night wherever you are bye